morning, Nick. Team Energy Power Sports. It's uh, just a couple days after Labor Day weekend. We're out on the 205 Alumacraft, and uh, Vince and I are going fishing. Uh, it's stager time, which is uh, some of our favorite time of the year. Uh, it's kind of a whole different mindset that these fish have, and I really enjoy targeting them through that. So. SSC is wrapped up, hell of a year. It was a fun event this year, but um, yeah, we're gonna take some time in uh, early September to get some fishing done ourselves. First light, calm as can be, we're pretty excited about today and uh, we're gonna go over a bit of uh, our favorite stager programs to see if it helps you guys uh, down the road for uh, targeting these gnarly kings as we call them. You know, they're far from silver, but uh, quite like hell, so it looks like an exciting morning. What are stagers? Stagers we describe as the king salmon is now at the end of its life cycle. They're heading towards the rivers, getting ready to go up and spawn. Typically, you know, different regions, it's a mid-August thing, and um, they, they kind of hang out there, try to pair up a bit, wait for a big rainfall, and then shoot up the river, and uh, they leave our lake system. So, typically, these fish will stage at the river mouths for, for a couple weeks and um, almost a couple different transition periods uh, you know we've touched on when they start greening uh, this would be the next step after that and uh, you know they, they they get triggered it's it's time to go up the rivers pair up and mate and a few transformations that often go on with this that you guys i'm sure you're aware of they get the kite their gonads start to fill up and and, and they stop eating because you know their their egg sacs are, are so big that they take up the rest of the cavity these fish are no longer eating and I, I find that's the most exciting part about these fish now how do you trigger strikes from something that's not hungry and um, and I equate to that by tick them off put some stuff by them that um, that's gonna get them angry obviously they're not gonna punch at baits they're gonna bite at them which is good to uh, trigger your strikes so a pack of males on a female. We call them, uh, you know, wolf packs, a few different terms for them. A big part of our program is to come across those. And if you could trigger one, you typically trigger two or three in that pack. You know, they got that aggressive, I mean, excuse the terminology, they're hot and horny, they're raring to go, and these things are aggressive as can be. Trigger those strikes, that triggers the other two. And if you got your baits close enough inside that pack, you'll often double or triple up, which is a big part of our game, which we'd really try to work on with our leader lens and, uh, and approaches on these fish. So a lot said there, but let's kind of get into a bit more of those details, but that pretty much covers our theory behind a stager. So our baits um, aren't too far off from our early summer program. You know, our go-to colors, which we don't tend to stray too far away, our white, green, um, green nuke which is just you know a, a chrome based spin doctor and a couple e chips although one thing um i do want to point out is we really shorten our leads here um, so this is about a 10 to 12 inch lead uh, you know a good way to base it is it's double the length of the spin doctor including your swivel um, it does it need to be that precise i don't know i just find i like a lot more width um, you know, when we're looking for aggression strikes, I really want to get that thing ripping around. And um, same speed, you know, we don't strand uh, too far off of those uh, two nines, the three twos. Um, the more aggressive pattern and spin we can uh, present to these kings, I find is, is more effective. Uh, do colors matter? You know what, I don't know. Um, that's the age old question and I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. I just like to keep it consistent. Um, you know, we're well equipped, especially in tournaments, to make sure we have doubles, triples, quadruples of each setup, in case we break off, in case we need to retie. I just find if we keep to these colors that we have confidence in, it, uh, it tends to keep us on track of refiring new baits down. E-chips, 
They'll go out in our long lines. Uh, again, you know, our tournament program is going to be two riggers, two dipsies, and uh, honestly, usually one shoot lead. Um, as we'll get into that a bit, focusing on areas. If we want to turn tight, I hate having uh, my long lines out on an inline board, as you know, they'll, they'll typically hit bottom, and it, it's going to restrict you a bit from your turning. Um, you know, I, I believe stager fishing, if you find the pack of fish, you want to work them uh, as they move around. So you want to uh, keep pursuing them, going in and out through them. And um, with a shoe rod, it allows you to do that a little more easily. And, you know, sometimes if you're making a tight turn, you might have to bring up your one side dipsy on the inside turn. Um, but if it's not necessary, I like to keep them in because the turns are typically when we trigger those strikes on our dipsies. And, um, yeah, that's a big part of the program is, you know, 30 degree turns um, here and there just to stimulate those fish that have been following. You know, I, we've seen on cameras, these fish follow, almost hypnotized. And even if you got a, a pack of kings, they'll almost knock each other out of the way to be the, the follower of the bait. And until you change that speed on that bait, they're more, more hypnotized by it. You speed it up, you slow it down, that typically is what triggers a strike. And again, if you have three or four other ones following, that other guy that's now watching his buddy get hooked up goes looking for the next bait as he wants to join in. I know it sounds odd, but it really is, I, I believe, a big part of our program is to get these fish worked up to the point where they're biting whatever's in the area. So again, these baits, there are preference in colors, and um, you know we, we find they work pretty well, but you guys definitely uh, let us know uh, your favorite colors that, that, or, or your go-tos as well. Uh, morning's picking up here. We got a uh, full sun up and um, our chromes have started going pretty good for us now. Uh, I'm a big fan of the chrome uh, during stangers. Just really have a big flash, you know, get those fish's attention. Um, you know, I believe a stager bite is purely out of aggression, so we're just trying to frustrate them as much as we can. Put some big flash in the water and uh, get their attention and get them chasing it. So. You know us and our spin doctors, Green Nuke is uh, one of our go-tos. Small male came out of that pack so these males typically chase that female you get three or four of them and they're they're all over put something by them spinning quick get their attention trigger those strikes one thing we found over the years targeting our stagers in the shallower waters you know when I say shallow waters it can range out from 70 right into 20 um, often when we leave the river mouth of the harbor we, we tend to start shallow and troll out um, these packs, I don't believe they follow temperature as much. Um, you, you know, us in temp isn't, um, isn't really a big part of our program. Um, you know, these fish, you'll catch them in 60, 70 degree water. These guys are just ready to go up the river and they're hanging out in that area. Um, so go looking because where you left off the day before typically aren't where they are the next day. Um, you know, the, the whole pack, I find is, is a community of fish that move around and one day they could be in that shallow and for whatever reason they've been pushed out to deeper, even east or west of the river mouths. Um, you know, we, we had a tournament there in St. Catharines uh, on, on the Labor Day weekend and those fish from where they were in the morning got moved way out to, uh, to the you know, east side, about a few miles and this is the pack moving as a whole. So, 
don't get discouraged if your if your first light bite isn't on them. Sometimes you just got to find the find the pack and then work them. And uh, you know, it might take a bit to get on them, but once you get on them, they're usually pretty active. So don't get discouraged there. Just keep on searching. Unless you get iced out, these these stagers are at the river mouth for a reason. They're waiting to go up. So they rarely totally vacate the area unless you get some adverse wind pattern that. Um, you know, Port Credit had it. We had uh, 70 degree water. We went down to 45 overnight. Fish stuck around for a few days, but you know, I find they'll, they'll they'll go find some better conditions. So, typically, once they show up at the river mouth, they're there until they run. You just got to kind of track out where they've moved to because typically it isn't too far out. So, like I mentioned, for uh, different regions and, and river mouths. Um, we typically look for, you know, a bit of structure, um, you know, deep holes, old riverbeds where um, we find a lot of times once the fish start to uh, thicken up in numbers, they, they often uh, are found in these holes. For example, um, you know, Credit River is our, uh, our stomping ground there. And there's an old riverbed that, that runs out from about 50 feet out to 70, uh, typically called, uh, the trench and um you know what, what, when these fish are waiting to get up man th th those fish stack up in that and, and we like to run an east west if the uh if the crowds aren't too thick um you know depending on a weekend you're probably going to have a lot of trouble focusing on a small area like that but through the week especially through our charters we would try to line up and always have uh have one of our guys on the riggers and as we come into that trench you know we're, we're doing 30 30 35 feet of water dips down to 50 feet for about 100 yards and often um, you know you drop your baits into them you can trigger those strikes and uh, and definitely you got the fish packing up in there um, with the males chasing the females different regions have different areas you know uh, Port Hope there we were fishing in the, in the Coburg tournament just a little bit to the west there just any sense of structure um, I, I find those fish will hang on that and um, and if they're not there they you know, sometimes they get pressured out. If, if all the boats are working that one general area, um, th these fish will move as a group. And sometimes it's just a matter of tracking down where that group uh, went. Typically, I'm gonna use credit again. Guys come out of the marina, a lot of boats are fishing in that, you know, three, 400 yards offshore, 30, 40 feet of water. Bite dies off, that pack moves out to that 100 foot. You know, 100 foot's always a, a good depth for a lot of guys. And what we'll often do is circle back mid-morning, um, preemptively hoping the pack moves out because uh, takes the pressure off those fish and, and often we can re-trigger those bites again. You know, mid-morning, we're big believers in an 11 o'clock bite and, and we often have that, that water to ourselves at 11 o'clock and, and we get a whole new go at these fish. They definitely are a first light bite, but you know, don't get discouraged if it goes quiet. You just, just tune up your speed, try to find something to, to get these aggressive fish striking at, uh, at our gear, right? So big believer in holes, a little bit of structure, uh, deeper structure that, that these fish will sit in and, and pack up. So this segment of the stager fishing, we've kind of broken it down into a few different outings for you guys. Just, uh, you know, Port Credit, that's our home water where we touched on, you know, a bit of structure we like to fish, Humber Bay, um, there's not much structure. It's a bit of a plateau. Um, so we're kind of working the 40 to 50 range right now, which is uh, taking strikes, just not sticking. I panic jump there. So typically stage you're fishing, you know, you're fishing tighter areas around the river mounts and um, you're often gonna get a lot more condensed traffic. And, uh, you know, that could add some excitement to the day as, you know, a lot of people might not be as in tune to the flow and then sometimes there isn't a flow, right? Like I, I find over the years, everyone just slowly starts working the same lines, either north, north, south, east, west. And, and you know you got to be aware of kind of the guys that might not be as in tuned as what the rest of the fleet's doing maybe guys that don't get out as much um so yeah you kind of you know everyone always says they have a line i'm on a line i'm on a line but honestly it's uh 
It's a lot of give and take, kind of read, you know, read the, the flow of the traffic and, and, you know, be considerate. Often a lot of times guys are hooked up in a fish and, you know, their attention's on the fish and they might not be on the wheel as, um, as in tuned as they should be, but you know, you gotta give them that leeway and then just try to give them some room. And honestly, a lot of uh, guys that aren't too common with uh, a lot of the techniques, you know, lead cores and long lines, you definitely just wanna, you know, give a bit of, cutting across the back of boats, just give a bit of extra room, you know, it's, when you're in 20, 30 feet, it's not a big deal, but if you're out in the 50 or 60, guys running six, seven, eight colors of lead, you know, they, they, they do have some lines behind them. So I can't say it's an exact science, but it's, you know, it's a matter of just working together out inside that pack without actually communicating, just kind of reading the flow and the movement of, uh, of the day. And last thing you want to do is get in arguments when you're out just trying to get away from the world. So sometimes we find ourselves coming right into the shallow waters, you know, I think just in here off the ridge town in Fort Credit, we're in a 20 feet. So we'll still keep some of our flashers out. But we'll also toss out, you know, some J13s, plugs, Lyman's, of course, with very familiar bait, and uh, and spread them out a bit, and uh, you know, just the different techniques, shallow diving baits, 10, 12 feet, um, definitely could be productive. And also, you know, sometimes it's nice just to uh, toss out the anchor and cast some spoons. It's, uh, you know, I'm a troller at heart, but I have. Uh, Time to time, just pitch some spoons and, uh, you know, it just adds another element of excitement out there. Um, you know, not fighting the motor or anything, just just simple cast and just like it be offshore. So definitely lots of approaches to go when you're stager fishing. And, you know, this is a few of what we do in a typical summer, but, you know, whatever gets you out there and, uh, and gets you into these gnarly stagers uh, makes for a fun morning. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, short little video series. I think we're going to wrap everything up in this double header, but uh, you know, it, uh, it's been a program we've been developing over 20 years. Honestly, I'm always still learning and adding to it as I get introduced to new techniques and new tactics. Um, like I always say, Whatever we say isn't right, but it's been working for us over the years. And uh, honestly, we really enjoy doing this and bringing this to you. I wish uh, there was a bit more opportunity like this when I was first getting into the fishery. So uh, take what you do out of it. Hopefully it helps you catch some bigger fish. And we see you on the uh, Silver Salmon uh, leaderboard over the years. Stay tuned for a follow-up with a October Blue Zone shoot there, where we're going to kind of touch on going back after Silver King before the year's done. All right, like and subscribe. We'll see you on the water. Enjoy.